So after 15 years, my favorite pilot watch has just given up the ghost. The pins in the strap have just broke. The bezel doesn't work anymore. It's all scratched to hell. So in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you about what I look for in a pilot watch. Hi, I'm Rick James from The Pilot Teacher and today we're gonna to be picking a new watch. Um, this was my baby. I've had this my entire flying career, um, but it's time for a new one. So, over the last 15 years, I have found some really neat things and some really horrible things when it comes to a watch that you use in the cockpit on a daily basis. So. Let's go and have a look at what those things are that I'm going to be looking for in my next pilot watch. So why do pilots need a watch to even begin with? I mean, you just fly, right? There's actually a lot that you need a watch for. It all started from the first days of aviation. The only way to navigate was to fly a set head in for a set amount of time and then make sure you check your position on a map. Um, with GPS's nowadays, it's all done with moving map. You see the iPad mini behind me there, it's got four flights on it. It's awesome. Um, but you still need a watch. So why do we even need one? The main things that you're going to be needing a watch for is for your accurate timekeeping. As a pilot, you have got to be ready for when that customer shows up. That means you've got to take that time and you've got to work yourself backwards. You've got to get the aircraft ready. You've got to get it fueled. You've got to get your flight plan done. You've got to get your flight plan filed. You've got to make sure that the aircraft is um, serviceable. Um, you've all got to work back in time. And again, it all comes down to time. And having a watch that is accurate for a start and is reliable is paramount. So. Over the last few years, I've tried different watches. I've tried a smart watch, I've tried a cheap watch, um, I've tried a digital watch, um, but I always keep coming back to my trusty Citizen Navihawk watch. Um, it's gonna to be tough to find the replacement, but I'm gonna go and have a look at some different watches right now. So the things that I look for in a watch is it's gotta be reliable. It's gotta be durable. Um, depending on the kind of job you're doing, like I'm a bush pilot, so you know I'm out lifting barrels, I'm lifting uh, long lines, cargo nets, you name it. So it's getting hammered. Hence the reason why this one is scratched to hell. I like watches that are very easy to read at a very quick glance. Having too much stuff on the face can just be distracting. Um, I want to be able to see the minute hand really easy. I want to be able to see the date really easy. Um, sometimes I've had some watches and the you know, the, the, out, the, the hands are so big that they block the date window. You can't see the date and it's quite frustrating. And then you have to pull out your phone and have a look and you kind of look like a bit of a tard in front of the customer when you don't even know what the date is. Um, so easy to read, not much clutter on the face, easy to set the time and the date, especially if you are gonna be a fixed wing pilot that's going across country or um, across the globe. You need to be able to easily just set your watch. Um, I had a watch that was such a pain in the rear end to set. Even just changing an hour time zone, like if I was going an hour backwards, I had to go through all the 24 hours to get to the hour that was just before. Why they just didn't put a button on it so I can go backwards an hour? I don't know. That kind of <laughs> makes sense to me, but apparently not to the watchmaker. So one that's easy to set, is so important comfortable it's got to be comfortable if your watch is too tight like in summer when it gets hot you know my arms swell and you know i can tell after a day of flying on fires my arms are just swollen if my watch is too tight then i've got the imprint of my watch um so yeah it, it's got to be comfortable so durable high quality reliable easy to read at a glance easy to set kind of no-brainers really but you'll be surprised how many watches that you may try over the years or have tried already that just don't fill all those requirements so when you look at a watch 
they can be really expensive. Uh, my Citizen Navihawk, I think it was about 500 bucks, even back then. Um, but it's paid for itself. It's lasted me 15 years. Like I've had cheaper watches and they lasted me one year. You know, I went to lift one fuel drum and pff, it just broke. Or it got wet and it was supposed to be waterproof and water resistant and screen fogged up and that was the end of that. So yeah, it's, think of it as an investment, right? If you're gonna be spending 80,000 bucks on flight school, what's a couple of hundred bucks for a reliable watch? In the grand scheme of things, nothing, especially if that one lasts you, you know, five, 10, 15, 20 years. So buy a, buy a good watch. Um, we're gonna go through some now and uh, I'm gonna start off with some lower price ones, some higher price ones, just so you've got a bit of an idea of kind of what I look for in a watch. So this first watch is in the under $100 range. And so this one for under 100 bucks is the Aviator N31S by Astro Avia. And the one thing that I really like about this watch is it's so easy to read at a very quick glance. You know, the white hands against the black face, it's just quick. I can instantly see, bang, it's reading just after 10.08. Super easy. It's just a very clean watch. It's a chronograph, so it's got a nice, easy to read start, stop and reset feature, which is really good when you're a flight student um, and you're doing cross country flights and you've got different legs that are certain times that you have to fly. Um, I like to use my start, stop for, um, for my engine start, engine stop. So basically I start my stopwatch, start my engine, it runs until I shut the engine down. It works really good for that. It's got a nice easy dial so you can easily set the time and the date. It's very clear to read at night. It's got a nice glow in the dark feature uh, when you press the button. So it's, it's very easy to read on night flights. Cause again, if you're a student, you're gonna be doing night cross countries. You need to be able to look at your watch and you don't wanna get your flashlight out, which then wrecks your night vision. So this one has got a stainless steel strap. It's a 42 millimeter case. Um, um, and for under 100 bucks, I think this is a really, really nice watch. I think it would work really well in the cockpit. Um, it's got really good reviews on Amazon. Um, you can find the link to this one uh, in the comments below. Um, but yeah, it's a really, really good watch. The other watches that I found in this price range that um, are pretty good contenders, if I was going to be spending under 100 bucks, would be the Casio Aviator MTP4500D dash one a v or the timex expedition pioneer um, they they both look really really nice watches and i i i like them when i when i saw them when i was looking in this category those are two that i would also look at but if i was going to spend under 100 bucks for sure it'd be the aviator by astro avia so after i'd gone under the 100 buck range I started to go, okay, well, let's see what the difference between a $100 watch and a $200 watch gives you. Um, and the one that I really like myself is the Casio G-Shock Men's GBA 800. And I love this watch because it's got the G-Shock pedigree and durability. Uh, the G-Shock watches have been around for years. Um, I've seen so many pilots with them, um, especially Bush pilots, why? because they're durable, they're bulletproof. You can bang the bejesus out of it and they just keep going. They're very easy to read. Again, this has got white hands on a black face. And the other thing that I like about this watch, which is similar to my Citizen, is that it's got a digital display as well as the analog hands. So you can instantly see the date, what day it is. And the really good thing about this is when you set your timer or your stopwatch on it, you can see it right there on the digital display. Um, and it's nice, it's not cluttered with too much stuff. It's a really nice, clear display. Simple start, stop, reset functions for the stopwatch and the timers, which is what you want in flight. You don't want to be messing around with your watch. It's got very clear glow in the dark features. Again, perfect for your night flights. You don't want it too bright. So this watch has a plastic strap, 9 millimeter case, so it's a little bit bigger and it's a little bit bulkier. Um, but for around about 150 bucks, I think this is a really good pilot watch. Um, 
durable, easy to read, easy to set the time and date, easy to use the stopwatch, and it's got the pedigree of the uh, Casio G-Shock line. So um, 150 bucks, I think it's a, a really, really good contender. If it's not quite your style, um, here are two other watches that I really like in the 100 to 200 dollar price range as well. The first one is the Citizen EcoDrive AT2141-52L. Really, really nice watch. Um, if that's not quite your thing, the other one that I really liked was the Victorinox Night Vision 241729. Um, beautiful watches, all three of them very unique, um, very different so depending on your style um, if you're looking for a watch in between the 100 and 200 dollar range um, out of these three watches you can easily find uh, a watch that's going to suit you in that price range so if you want to take a look at these watches i've got them all on my website as well as in the description below so if you want to go to pilotteacher.com forward slash watches you can find all these watches and more and a selection for you ladies too all on there Beautiful watches, so go take a look. Okay, so the next price bracket I've got is the under $500 range. And this is one that I think most pilot watches that I've seen around in the industry fall into. Um, and it, just because it gives you that higher quality and durability, which is you know something that you want in a pilot watch. So my recommendation for a pilot watch in this category and all the categories um, is ProMaster Skyhawk A-T by Citizen and it is the newer version of the Citizen Skyhawk that I've had for the last 15 years. Um, yeah, I'm going to get it again. <laughs> I know I'm a bit of a, you know, some people want, oh, well, why are you going to get the same again? The reason why I'm getting it again is because it does everything so well and it's been such a good watch, so why wouldn't I get it again? This one's just a newer version. Um, I really like this watch because it's, it is, it's so durable. It's so easy to read. Um, you can set the time and the date on it really easy. You've got the analog hands, you've got the digital display. It's got the world time, so it's really easy to set up the Zulu time on it. So you can just press a button, flick back from your current time zone to Zulu time for when you're filing a flight plan. Um, it's also got, which is quite nerdy, it's got an E6B whiz wheel around the outside and a bezel. Um, so when I was in flight school, I used to use that quite a bit for fuel calculations, figuring out true airspeed, that kind of stuff. Um, since flight school, I've never used a whiz wheel. I don't know a pilot that has used a whiz wheel since leaving flight school, but it's kind of a cool feature. Um, <laughs> you know, and we're all pilot nerds, right? So why not? Um, but I love this watch and yeah, this is going to be the watch that I go out and buy. If the Citizen ProMaster Skyhawk is not to your taste, um, other watches that um, I really like, that if the Citizen wasn't available anymore, um, these are the two that I would also look at. The first one is the Aviate Hawker Hurricane. Um, these are really unique watches. Aviator's got some really, really cool watches. Um, some of them are a bit more dressy. They've got too much clutter on the face for what I like as, you know, as a pilot watch, but for a dress watch, awesome. Really, really interesting watches. Uh, the Hawker Hurricane I really like because it's just nice for flying, nice, easy to read. Um, the other watch is the Seiko SNA411P1. Again, another great watch. Um, if I had to pick between the two, uh, I don't know. I don't know, it's a, it's a tough choice. They're both really, really nice watches, but because my Skyhawk is still available, hands down, that's the one that I'm gonna pick. So yeah, if you wanna find all these watches, you can find the links below. I think um, I've just used Amazon because it's, it's really easy to send um, people from all over the world to Amazon and it just it fires them off into their own individual countries. Um, so easy to get, like free delivery kind of next day with Prime, it's easy. Um, also you can head over to pilotteacher.com forward slash watches and you can see the good list of watches there. So these are just some of the selection of watches that I have found 
whilst I've been doing my research into a new pilot watch. And I figured, well, if I'm doing the research, then somebody else is gonna be doing the research too. Um, so that's why I wanted to kind of make this video, just kind of to look at the things that, that I search for, you know, as I'm looking for my new watch. Um, there's so many brands out there, so many different styles. Uh, yeah, the world's your oyster. You know, there's, there's ones for females, there's ones for males, there's unisex watches, you name it. But the main things you have to remember to look for is easy to read, durable, high quality, reliable, easy to set, timer stopwatch functions, um, the rest of it is entirely up to you. Um, my wife was asking me because I was looking at my watches and she kind of, she looked over at my shoulder and she's like, so if I could have any watch, what would it be? So I showed her and it was the Breitling Navi Timer. And uh, yeah, that's my dream watch. Then she saw the price of it and it was over six grand. <laughs> She basically slapped me on the back of the head, told me to keep dreaming because there's no way that I, she was going to let me spend six grand on a stupid watch, as she called it. So uh, we could all dream, right? But I'm going to have to settle for my, you know, $500 Citizen Navihawk watch. But for me, I'm completely happy with that. Um, it does everything I want in a pilot watch. And if you're the same, go buy one. Make sure it's good, make sure it's reliable, and it will last you for years. Hope you found this enjoyable. If you did, thumbs up, hit that subscribe. If you've got any comments, tell me about your watch. Stick them in the comments below, and I'll see you next time.